That's pretty good. You give me a ticket, you're paying it. <laughs> Sounds good. I don't go hot riding around. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lou with another episode of My Car Story and with no stranger to the channel, our friend Frank Troost. Frank, what amazing car do we have today from your collection? This is a 1960 Chrysler 300F. And this one, the color? is terracotta. Terracotta. And la ladies and gentlemen, take a look at that. So Frank, you shared that you are a collector of colors not just the car. Nope, I'm strictly uh, a color buyer. If I don't like the color, I'm not going to have any interest in the car. That My favorites are pastels. This isn't quite a pastel, but even so, I really like the color. How long have you had this one? I've had it about 10 years. Okay. Uh, here you were pretty restricted in colors when they were new. They only made them in four colors. That was red, black, white, and terracotta. That is quite the trunk ornament. I think they call that the flight deck. The flight uh, although the deck. On the 300s, they were standard. And on the 1960 Valiant, they were standard. Uh, on most of the other Chrysler products, they were available at an extra charge. The boomerang taillights, probably one of the favorites of all hot rodders. And we'll take a moment and we'll show you what those look like in the night. And while we're back here I thought I'd show you what the boomerang taillights look like at night. And now let me step back for just a moment. Come on back with me Frank. I want to give you one more shot if that was in front of you. And we'll take a look at the trunk and treats. So here's our trunk and treats on the Chrysler 300F. So you see the 60 Chrysler car of your life for the time of your life. The fishing, the postcard, your operating and maintenance guide, the car of your life for the time of your life, Nineteen sixty air conditioning service manual. Here's an article. Spine tingler. Now that's an interesting shot. As the two mountains come together for the three hundred F. Red hot and rambunctious. That's great. And then the actual brochure for the car. The exciting story. of the 300F. The sound of authority. If you want to pause on those, you can. If you like the trunk of treats, 
I like the trend. You yeah, that's a great shot of that engine. The cross ram. You can pause on some of these. There's the ram induction information and the suspension. The convertible. Dimensions. The end. We have our jack instructions, our tire. Here's your what it looks like on the inside of that. Talk about a dazzling trunk ornament. And that's our trunk and treats. And we're back. Now, these bumperettes, were these standard or? They were standard. They were standard. So the bumperettes, wonderful curves all over the place. Let me just give you a shot, and the sun's hitting it just right, of what this looks like. This was uh, pretty much the end of the era for the chrome and fin cars. So in uh, 62, the, uh, the, the Chrysler products uh, really cut the fins off everything. Uh, Cadillac reduced them. Uh, but the 60, uh, 61 Chrysler was pretty much the same as this. And then 62, fins were gone. Now you clearly have a passion towards the fins. I, I do. Pastel colors, chrome fins. That's, that's the hot ticket for me. And the 300F. I don't know how many places on this car that 300F logo is, but uh, it's got to be 10 or 12. And no missing it with that orange trim inside the 300 as well. And they, they weren't making those emblems small. It's just a great mirror. Not that you can adjust that with your hand. Uh, Maybe that, you can because you're about six foot three. Well, this one's got, uh, uh, you can adjust that on the inside of the car on the left side. Is that right? Okay. Yeah, yeah that was uh, getting to be fairly common in the, in the more expensive cars to have a, a remote mirror. And I'm going to show the interior and then we're going to actually turn it around to show you what it's going to look like in the front. So as I open the door, you're greeted by a 300 right in the door. No missing that. You've got what looks like almost leather here, and then the carpet. Let's take a look at the interior. Now right off the bat, I see an optional power seat. Yeah, that, they may, that might have been standard on, on the 300. Uh, the thing a little unique on the carpet, uh, on the uh, on the front they had those uh, the, the, traction the, mat. Yeah, that, that are I think they were made of uh, uh, aluminum, and needless to say, those would get uh, scuffed up uh, pretty rapidly. Another big three hundred. I like how they made them. I mean, this is a massive car, and yet they gave it bench seats. For everyone in the car. You mean, yeah, bucket seats. Bucket seats. Four, four bucket seats. Yes, sorry, well, that yeah, was the personal seats. luxury car concept. Yeah. They, those, those cars would be basically four seats. Sometimes I get so excited, Frank, talking about the car, I don't even know what the heck I'm talking about. But uh, that's why we, we have commenters and on YouTube who will help me out. <laughs> as well as yourself. Now, this has swivel seats, too. It does. So, this does this. Uh, correct, it. An interesting thing, when Chrysler came out with these uh, swivel seats, and I, uh, it could have been uh, 59, uh, it automatically swiveled out when you opened the door. And then when you went to close the door, it automatically swiveled back. Well, whatever the mechanism was, didn't last very long before it broke. And so then it was no longer automatic. You had to uh, swivel the seat out manually. The push button transmission. And your car has the optional air conditioning. Yes. 
That's uh, actually a lot of people call that a push button transmission. It's really not. There are push button controls for the transmission. <laughs> it's the standard Chrysler Torque Flight, uh, and they use push button controls for it. Oh, from uh, I think from 50, uh, 56 through about 64. I, I see no advantage to it. Uh, the push buttons, although they, they did nicely match the uh, air conditioning controls on the right side of the steering wheel. So what do they call this dome? Do they call it the Astrodome? The Astrodome. And you know what, let me... Uh... I, and I think that they came up with that before there was the other Astrodome. So let me do this. We're going to uh, show it to you what it looks like because it glows in the dark. So I wanted to show you while I was in the interior what this looks like at night. So there's the brake light and here's the rest of the Astrodome as you can see right there. What that looks like at night. We'll take you back to the interior. And we're back. So you can see there's lots of stuff on this interior. This this interior, Frank, is maybe one of the most glorious interiors. I mean, everything is really luxurious, great buttons. One thing that I will share with you on this that I realized is not only, but there's a, this goes in and out based on the high and the low. Do you see that? On the air conditioning. That's, that's basically the blower speed. So that would be whether it was on heat or air conditioning. Uh, the speed for the blower is controlled by that lever. Uh, you pull it in or out. Okay. Well, we're going to take, uh, we've got the day-night mirror, as you can see right there. That switch in the air conditioning. We're going to uh, show you the roof line for just a second. or the. Uh, One thing I might mention about yeah, these please. interiors. Uh, a lot of Chrysler products use these kind of translucent plastic wheels. And when they were new, uh, they were clear. Uh, but if you see one today, if it's clear, it's not an original wheel. Because they all yellow just like that one. Just like that one. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's uh, turn this one around, shall we? So we've turned it around so you can see the 300 grill. And this right away tells you it's the 300F. Like the gold scripting, and this also shows on the terracotta, it's got a metal flake to it, and that really looks good. So you've got the dual mirrors combining with the faux hood scoop on it, headlights, turn signal, and big wide open grill. Let's open the hood, shall we? Okay. It's got such a stance. This car has such a stance, doesn't it? Yeah. Nice. Oh, nice that's glorious. And this is why we turned it around, so you can see that. That's cool. Well, when, when people see this engine at car shows, they, they think it's uh, somehow customized uh, or been hot rodded or something. Uh, but this car is exactly uh, uh, how it shows now is how it would have shown when it was brand new. It had those uh, red cross ram uh, intake manifolds, the gold air cleaners. So uh, under the hood here, it would be 100% uh, correct. And, and you know, for the time frame, when you used to have quote unquote a lot of uh, room under the hood, with that air conditioner, that kind of took that away. And this is actually the factory one. Well, you, you ran into issues with this uh, if you had to change the back spark plugs uh, because with those uh, manifolds uh, coming way over to, uh, near the fenders and the carburetors, there wasn't really a way to get to the rear spark plug. So there's a hole in the fender well uh, for access to the back spark plugs. Is that right? You can see there's a, a bolt there where there's where there's a plate Show down me. here, right there. Oh, you see yeah. those two bolts and then this plate, and then Comes out. you can get through to the rear wow. spark plugs. And there's your factory air. 
Yeah. Probably may uh, half of them had factory air conditioning. Well, it seems like most of them that I've seen, that's the first air conditioning that I've seen on them. So it's pretty cool. And you can see the, a little bit better here, you can see the air conditioning right out there. Yes, and if the car didn't come with air conditioning, it would be a problem if you wanted to put factory uh, air unit in it because you'd have to change the dashboard. Got it. And those vents on the dash were just on air conditioned cars. Usually there's a fender plate. Is that in the door or something? Or did uh, I miss it? Well, we have the world's foremost expert on 300s nearby, and he would. We'll, we'll ask him. Yeah, uh, well, he while, would, while we're he waiting would know. for him to do that, let's fire it up, shall we? Okay. Maybe it's right in the door. Is it in? There it is. It's right there. So they tell me this car was originally white, which wouldn't surprise me. I find most cars that were originally white get painted some other color along the line. <laughs> there we go. I say that because we've got, well, a white one right back there. Which, by the way, if you want to see that uh, white one. That, that white one was not white originally. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. So the white one's not white originally, no. and the, 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 this one was white, and now yeah. it's terracotta. That's great. <laughs> That is smooth, but that engine means business. Yes, it's it's a little fooling, or it's there's a little fooling around to keeping it idling and running smoothly. Okay. With those two four barrel carburetors. Yeah. Let me listen to it at idle. Go ahead, Frank. Give it a rev. Sounds powerful. Sounds like a luxury cruiser. And you can see the light coming through with the sun. Frank, let's take this one for a ride. Okay. So Frank and I are cruising in the 300F on a perfect day here in Illinois. Frank, you said something I find interesting. First of all, let me show you the tack. Might I add, that's the worst possible place for a tack where you have to look down by your feet to see it. but cool nonetheless but so this car tell me a little bit of the story on how this car became yours you... well I became enamored with these uh, chrome and fin Chrysler cars about 20 years ago and I was at a, uh, a uh, cruise night in one of the local towns and I noticed this uh, this big white fin car was obviously a Chrysler and it had these louvers on the hood and I didn't recall ever seeing anything like that before. So I'm, I'm standing around and, and the owner uh, came up to me. And uh, I, I said to him, I said, uh, did you put those louvers on the hood? He says, no, this, this car came that way. I said, boy, I don't remember seeing one like that. He says, well, it's a 300F. I said, well, yeah, okay. I was familiar with the 300 series, but uh, in my opinion, the 57, 8, 9 were, were nothing really special. Uh, and then I'm looking at his car with his great interior, four bucket seats, it's all leather, the swivel seats, it's a uh, uh, knockout dashboard, and I had to have one. <laughs> uh, so. so it's the only car in your collection that you looked for? That's correct. Everything else, I would just be somewhere and there'd be one of those cars. Or I'd mention it to somebody, uh, uh, maybe a body shop owner or something. Uh, <laughs> and then, uh, you know, maybe he'd call me or, or something. But generally, no, I don't didn't, never look for anything. Just sort of come across it. Now, and, and I probably buy one car every year or two. But I'll bet you I look at 50,000 cars a year. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really picky. A lot has to do with color. Uh, that's very important to me. I generally like the pastel colors. Uh, this isn't a, quite a pastel, but but even still, I think it's it's a, a great color. I, I kind of fell in love with it right away. And what a great cruiser, right? I mean, yes. this thing it, is it just is. powerful is. and cruising. You can hear it. Yes, it is. As a matter of fact, they had a separate little brochure that went with this when you bought it, warning you that this is not going to ride as soft as, uh, as Chrysler's normally do, and it's not going to be as quiet as most Chrysler's, because uh, it's more of a low-restrictive uh, exhaust system. 
So they were preparing you, uh, you know, just the way we like it. Uh, but you know, uh, it was. They, <laughs> I think they they called them the banker's hot rod. So it, well, you'd had to be fairly well to do to buy it. They were expensive, and um, they never sold a lot. I think in in '60 they sold maybe a thousand coupes or in, uh, maybe 350 convertibles. Frank, always a treat getting together with you. Thanks so much for sharing your incredible collection, and thanks for sharing the car that well. You actually had to go and look for. Yes, that's right. Thanks so much for being on the channel.